is the head of my life. Amen. I thank you, Father, for just another sunshine day. Because we know if you hadn't woke us up, none of us would be here right now. Amen. So we thank God this morning for his grace and his mercy. Geraldine and in their absence today and Amen. Reverend Levy and Sister Minister Murdy and Levy and Amen. their absence of them they're traveling together. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And we give honor to Evangelist Jackson and to, to Reverend Thurman Lovelace and to Amen. Pastor Shirley Whitfield Amen. and to, to the officers to my lovely and beautiful wife, Minister Alice Lovelace, amen. I thank God for her, amen. And to each of you, God's children, amen. You know, God has been good. I don't care how things been in our lives. God has still been good. Not just good, but very good. Amen. Amen. If you would just give me a moment to go to the throne of grace, oh heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for your blessing. Father God, for your presence in this place. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for Lord for sitting high and looking low and Lord just loving us so much, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Even though we disappointed you, Father God, you still love us. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you would move and have your way in this place on this day and this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Truly good. We had a wonderful time this morning in Sunday school. Amen. Then it with the children of Israel praising God. On their deliverance out of Egypt. And you know, we got a right to praise Him this morning. Amen. We can just praise Him. I know we went through a lot of stuff in these last two years. But God is still showing us how merciful and how compassionate He is toward us because we still here. Amen. We still can praise Him with our voice, we still can praise Him with our hands. Stand up on our feet and give God praise. We still can worship Him in spirit and in truth. Man, that's a blessing. When you know Him for yourself, when you can see His handiwork in your life, not only in your life, but you can see Him working in others' lives. Oh, that makes you want to praise Him even the more. When you know what God has done and that He is a promise keeper. You know, we sing that song, God is keeping me, but He promised that He would keep you. He said, Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. He said, I'll be with you. I'll never leave. You. Sometimes we might walk away from Him, but He'll never leave us. He still have our hand to try to lead and guide us back. Amen, amen. I'm just excited about God this morning. Amen. Amen. If you would join me, we we'll have a couple of passages of scripture this morning. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. And 2 Thessalonians 1 through 5. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 14. And when we get there, are you ready to say amen? Amen. Myself to have apprehended. Uh -huh. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, 
and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And then 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Finally, brother, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. But the Lord is faith. Who shall establish you and keep you from and we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Amen. We want to talk about this morning keeping your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Keeping your eyes on Jesus. You know what? Uh, all of us have made some mistakes. And I know we can all be a witness to that. I ain't even got to ask you to raise your hand. Because I already know that that's the truth. Amen. And that's the thing that we probably wanted to do right this year that we didn't get a chance to do last year. Amen? Uh -huh. Amen. And, and, and we, because of the pandemic, uh, many of us have pumped the brakes and slowed down a little bit on the things that we were doing. Uh -huh. And I imagine that there were some lofty goals that we set for ourselves in 2021. Amen? Amen. 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 And, and, and many of us have already fallen short of those goals. Mm -hmm. I just stop by and tell you that there's time for us to turn it around and put our eyes on Christ. Time for us to refocus our lives a little bit. Uh -huh. Amen? Yeah. To accomplish some of the goals uh -huh. we have set for ourselves in Christ and even surpassed. Yeah. Some may say that this year, <laughs> this year I'm going to be perfect uh -huh. Sunday attendance. Uh -huh. Y'all know how we make our New Year's resolutions and stuff. And we know it's 52 Sundays in a year. We say, I'm going to make it perfect. But yet it's still is September. And we've already missed four. <laughs> Some maybe five Sundays out of the year. But, but I want to let you know we got 16 more left that we can turn it around and, and get things like we want it to be. Amen. Because our God still loves us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we can make things right. Amen. If we start right now, mm -hmm. then you can raise up your head and say, thank you, Lord, for another opportunity that I can renew my commitment unto you. And that I can focus my eyes on Jesus. So I may have said that that person on my job, you know, we got some, and always one or two on the job, and we don't want to be one of them. <laughs> that always want to push your button. Huh? Well. And, and we, we said, Lord, I want this year, I'm not going to let that individual push my buttons and, and then somehow, some way they get to talking and they cross that invisible line and, and we decide we're going to give them a, a piece of our mind. But, but today, right now, yeah. we can't do anything about 
yesterday. But today, right now, we can make up in our minds that we're going to see Jesus. Amen. Amen. When those situations come up, we can do like Nehemiah, take a moment and pray. Yeah. And ask God for strength. And you know what? Our God is so good, he can answer instantaneously. All right. yeah. Huh? Uh, yes, he can ask. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. And he said that they were going to study. But the Bible is still on the shelf. And we haven't taken time to dust it off. But it's still there where we left it at. Amen. When we said what we were going to do. But today, <laughs> today, we can make a difference today. Amen? Amen. See, we can't go back to yesterday, but today is all we have control of is right now. Because tomorrow is not promised. But we can give our all in all today, one day at a time. Amen. Uh, yes, my brothers and sisters, we can we can refocus ourselves on the things of God, on Jesus. You see, we can't allow our failures to, of the past to blow our vision of our future. Mm -hmm. Because we can't change yesterday. Mm -hmm. But by the grace of God, we can make the most out of right now that makes our future bright. Yeah. So remember those things that will help you to move forward. But forget those things that will hold you back. Yeah. Paul had to do some forgetting in the text. Paul said that he was circumcised on the eighth day. Paul was saying that he had the right birth. Mm -hmm. A true Jewish family always had its male child circumcised when he was just eight days old. And it marked the promise that the Jews were the promised and covenant people. Oh, uh, yes, uh, of the stock of Israel. Uh, Paul was saying that he had the right national heritage of the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin was considered the aristocratic tribe of Israel. Those are the rich folk. Mm -hmm. Because of the tribe's loyalty in a time of disloyalty. Paul said he was of the tribe of Benjamin. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. He claims to have the right language and the right customs uh, in following God. Then he says he was a Pharisee. He had been religiously educated in the word of God and been taught by one of the most sagacious teachers of his time, Gamaliel. Paul had some stuff. Yeah. He claimed to have the right religion, to have been a Pharisee. The Pharisees were the strict religious, so strict that they renamed it the separated ones. Zeal. Paul had a zeal of God. <laughs> Paul had zealously stood and fought for his religion. Oh hmm? uh, yeah, he had, Paul was something else. Uh, he hotly pursued and persecuted the church. Paul had such a zeal his, for his religion, he sought to wipe out any other religion that didn't line up with it. He is. Then Paul said he was blameless. Paul claimed to, he had sought to keep the law and had kept it completely and fully. Now that didn't mean that Paul didn't sin. Uh -huh. But what Paul did was when he sinned, he took his sacrifice to the temple to make atonement for his sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, uh, yes, my brothers and sisters. Paul said, but all these things, my, you know, he, he, Paul said he had to give up a lot. All of his, his accolades, and even his parents wouldn't talk to him no more. He had to leave them behind, but he said he counted all those things for loss. Yeah. 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 That's it. For the excellency 
of Christ, what are we willing to give up that we can look more like Jesus? There's some stuff that we got to be willing to cast out so that we can look more like Jesus. I guess Paul said he was willing to count those things for loss. Yes, my brothers and sisters. Paul said in our text proper, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. See, that's some stuff we gotta we gotta let loose because we can't move forward if we keep looking. That's right. And we keep trying to hold on to the junk that have hindered us all our lives. We gotta let it go. That's up. That's up. We got to let it go if we're going to move forward in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah, he said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth, we got to put some effort into it. We got to press for the mark of the high calling of God. We just can't think God going to drop everything in our lap. But he want to see us be energized about what we're doing. Be excited about him. How many of us like Women, how many of you women like to receive roses every now and then? Uh-huh. Like to be taken out to dinner every now and then? Uh, you know, you want to be appreciated. God wants us. Yeah. Yeah. He wants us to appreciate Him. He wants us to, to be fully committed unto Him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I press toward the mark. When you're pressing, that means something is fighting against you. Amen. You're coming up against some opposition. The closer you get to Christ, the the more opposition you're going to face. But God said he will strengthen those that that are weak. Because you're not fighting with your own strength. You're fighting with the power of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Yes, my brothers and sisters. Because our hope is in Christ, we can let go of our past and guilt and failures and look forward to what God will help us to become. Let us grow in the knowledge of God by concentrating on our relationship with Him right now. Sometimes we as Christians lose focus. We stray from God and our hearts, we grow weary and well-doing, we grow slack in our commitment. We get sidetracked sometimes. Uh, Sometimes we listen to other folk, and other folk can cause uh, an impression upon us that make us stop doing what we know is right. And we find ourselves getting slow with other folks that's watching us, that have been watching us when we were in our commitment. We affect them because they become slow. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yes, but he tells us we got to let those things go. Mm -hmm. We got to refocus. These times we can't see that we're heading in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. When we lose focus on on Jesus, we can't see that we're making the wrong choices. We can't see some of those things. Oh, but Paul tells us to keep reaching yeah. forward. Yeah. He said, even though you made some mistake, push forward. Yeah. Yeah. Rely on Jesus everlasting arm. Keep pushing forward. Yeah. 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 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 through 5. I'm going to read this. And we're going to try to land this ship in a little bit. Yeah. Finally, brother, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have our faith. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil and we have confidence in the Lord touching you. Paul said we got confidence that God has got control in your life. Huh? Touching you that he won't do and will do the things which we command. He said, y'all going to listen to the preacher. Follow him as he follows Christ. Uh, That's what Paul was letting them know. You can follow me as I follow Christ. 
Christ because I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, you might not always want to hear the truth, but I'm going to tell it to you like it is. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. The word direct in the Greek means to be straightened fully. Paul implies that their focus has become blurred. Paul prayed that the Thessalonians would get refocused, that they might refocus their lives on Christ and his will for their lives. Yeah. If you will allow me to give you three quick points, I'll take my seat. First, we need to look at our passion in our service. Passion is an ardent affection, a love, a strong desire or affection for some object or cause, and the object of such desire or affection. David said in Psalm 63, 1 and 2, O oh God, thou art my God. Yeah. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Yeah. To see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. You see, David was on the run from his son Absalom. He was hiding out in the wilderness of Judea. And David, a man after God's own heart. Ah, uh, yeah, he, he prays to God. He seeks him early in the morning. Right? Yeah. Before his day get cluttered and all messed up and he got all kind of things coming at him, he seeks him early. Ah, yeah. uh, yes, and he longs to be in God's presence. But what David was longing for was to be in the sanctuary. You know, yeah. many of us take coming to God's house for granted, huh? A lot of folks want to use Sunday for a sleep in late day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but I want to give God his due early in the morning. I want to thank him for what he's doing and get up and move out. I know if I go to work at 3 o'clock in the morning, yeah. I surely can come out and see the God's house. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, yes, he said, we need to. He's on the run from Absalom. And he wanted to be brought out of the wilderness. Yeah. Not to see his friends. Mm -hmm. And be restored to the pleasures and the and the deities and the gaieties of the court, but that he might have access yeah. to the sanctuary. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. something about when you come into God's house and you come seeking the presence yeah. of God. That something about coming in God's house that gives you a feeling that you don't have everything else yeah. because this is a house that has been set up side as the house of prayer. You can get a breakthrough in this house. Uh, prayers can be an answer. Healing can take place in this house. David wanted to make his way back to the sanctuary. He didn't want to get there so that he could see the priests and the ceremony of worship, but to see the power and glory of God. Doesn't say as I have seen thee, but as I have seen thee. David was talking about when he was in the sanctuary and the Ark of the Covenant was in the Holy of Holies, the Shekinah glory yes. of God would come over the Holy of Holies as right. in the sanctuary in a cloud. Uh -huh. yeah. David knew that the presence of God was in that place. He said, my brothers and sisters, we should love yeah. coming out to God's house. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Above everything, Deuteronomy 6 and 5, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Jesus told us to love God is the great and first commandment. To love God with all your heart is the very soul and the essence of Christianity. Amen. If we love God well, like we should, we love ourselves and we love everybody else. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, right. That brings about the unity mm -hmm. 
of the church. When the world see us loving one another, when they see us getting along together, when they see us doing things in harmony, not talking each other down, not killing the pastor, not killing the praise team, not killing the person, not killing one another. They say, well, if y'all doing that, y'all doing the same thing we do. Come well, on. But there ought to be a difference Amen. between the way we act and the way the world acts. Mm -hmm. Many folk do those things because they can't see what God is doing. Because they're caught up in their own selves and in what they want instead of what God wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not working together. You can operate, but that's not cooperating. When you cooperate, you're working in harmony. Together. Hmm? Oh, yes. A church that is full of love is active in the ministry of God. They're willing to serve Him as we patiently wait on Jesus' return. When we fail to love God as we should, we become like the church of Ephesus who left their first love. The question is what causes us to fail? in our love for God. Sometimes the world steals our affection. Sometimes we volunteer for so much overtime on our job that money becomes the object of our affection and we have less and less time for God. Yeah. Matthew 6 and 24 says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. Oh, uh, else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and man. Sometimes, sometimes, my brothers and sisters, the pleasures of this life, the pleasures of this life lures us away from God. Sex, alcohol, drugs, and many other pleasurable allurements lure us away from God's house. God, uh, you know, a lot of folks say we can get the men at the church. Uh -huh. We can destroy the homes because we know if the man is not acting in the church, if, he, if he's not the head uh, of coming to church, if he's not leading his family out to church, then they know what's taking place at the house. Uh -huh. There is a, there's a, 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 a disconnect uh -huh. because He's really not holding his headship in the house. Because yeah. Christ is head of the church and, and man is head of woman. Amen. 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 So if you're not focused on what you're doing at the church, well, you see what's happening in the streets now. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. What's happening in the streets is when the devil can break up our homes and get them messed up, then our children will be a product of those things. But if we can hold it together, if we can come together here, when we get back at home, things will fall into place. Amen? Amen. Yes. We allow others that speak negative about God and the church to influence our decision making. We'll find ourselves getting farther away from God. Luke 8 and 14, and that which fell among thorns are they which when they heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Sometimes it's the attack of the enemy that calls us not to love God like we should. Yeah, yeah. 1 Peter 5 and 8 tells us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You know if he attacked Jesus, you know what he, what about us? What about looking juicy sheep? <laughs> he ready to pounce on us like a quarter pound of a cheese. <laughs> That's the way he, he sees us. Oh, okay, I got another Christian. Let me see how I can make him fall. But if our eyes are on Jesus, we can speak the word of God. Mm -hmm. We can tell him, I already have a 
God. Mm -hmm. And I love the Lord with all my might. Yeah, sometimes the devil will get on his attack. Yeah. On attack. Scripture tells us in Ephesians 6 and 12. For well, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But James 4 and 7 tells us to submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he'll what? Flee from it. You can put the devil to flight. You can get it out of your house. Huh? If you just uh, submit yourself unto the will of God. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. We can put him to flight. Yeah. And at other times, it is us. It is us that fail to nourish our love for God. Yeah. Time to get out. Nourish our love for God when we don't spend time with Him in prayer, when we don't study His Word, when we grow weary in our service to God, when, when doing God's work become a chore. Well, oh man, I gotta do this. I don't <laughs> feel like we start dreading what we're doing to for God, but we don't think about what all God is doing for us. Amen. How He's blessing after blessing after blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to do too much for them. All the time belongs to God. Yeah. Yeah. And when we grow big, church, we need to refocus. Yeah. Refocus our passion. And secondly, let's refocus on our purpose. So 2 Thessalonians 3 and 4, and we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. Our purpose is to glorify God. Huh? First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God? And ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If you're saved today, then you belong to God. We are purchased by His blood that we might fulfill His purpose for us. That purpose is to bring Him glory. In everything we do, we ought to give God the glory. And if you sing a song, it seems like you sing it like Tom O'Neill, you ought to give God the glory. And don't laugh it up for yourself, but give it to God. And if it ain't doing nothing but taking out the trash, give God the glory. And how you take out the trash, but in everything we do, we ought to do it in such a way that God gets the glory that somebody know that you're a child of God. Amen. Yes, that purpose is to bring him glory. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. And we have to take the gospel, the highways, the thyways, to our homes and communities. You see, evangelism is not an option. We are committed to the task of spreading the gospel. Not just the preachers and deacons. Not just the choir and the urchins. But each and every one of us share this commitment. 2 Corinthians 5 19 and 20 to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. He took it upon himself on the cross, I tell you, and hath committed unto us huh, the word of reconciliation. You definitely right, that's a ministry. Huh? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Amen. We are living sacrifice. Amen. We are living testimony that others might see the 
that Christ lived in us. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. The message that we take wherever we go is the gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died, was buried and rose again on the third day morning. My brothers and sisters, some of you may be asking, what about helping the hurting and feeding the hungry? Uh -huh. Well, certainly we should help those uh, that are hurting and feed the hungry, but not without giving them the gospel, not without giving them the word of God. Yeah, yeah. I want to kind of get a witness. Mark said in Mark 16 and 15, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the, the, the gospel to every creature. Do you hear me? And finally, as I get ready to go to my seat, let us refocus our patience and the Lord direct your hearts into the patient waiting of Christ. The word patient waiting means a, a patient enduring uh, for Christ, uh, not sitting idly, uh, not doing nothing, uh, but serving, uh, patiently waiting, uh, patiently praising God uh, every day, uh, patiently uh, opening up your mouth uh, and thanking Him, uh, patiently uh, while you're waiting. Uh, Patiently, while you're waiting, waiting in prayer, praying to God, thanking Him for His blessed assurance, thanking Him for His Son Jesus that died out on Calvary, thanking Him in your waiting, for giving you some loving parents, thanking Him.